What's up students, it's your boy, the Philly Golden Teacher. Welcome back to my class. In today's lesson, I will show you guys three different methods you can use to inoculate a spore syringe to agar. Now, first things first, I'm gonna go ahead and spray some isopropyl alcohol on my gloves and sanitize them. I've already wiped down my work area here with the isopropyl alcohol. I wanna make sure everything is as clean as possible when you're working in mycology. Uh, here I'm going to wipe down my inoculation loop and I have a little shot glass here I'm going to wipe down as well with the isopropyl alcohol. It's already clean but we're going to clean it up some more. Uh, I think I missed a spot here so I'm going to go over it again with the isopropyl alcohol. It never hurts to be too clean. There we go, now we're spotless. So one of the tools that I'm going to be using to inoculate is called the inoculation loop. Now you can purchase these for yourself uh, under like lab supply materials, but I went ahead and made my own out of a cheap twist tie. I'm trying to get a better focus for you guys so you can see. I pretty much went to broke boy tech on this. I'll have a video in the description below if you guys want to see how I made this. It's really easy. So starting from spores to agar, I find this is the best way to ensure that you have clean mycelium culture before introducing them to the grains. A lot of beginner growers are intimidated with agar work and I want to show you guys that it's actually quite easy to work with. Uh, the next tool in our arsenal is a sterile cotton swab. You can find these on Amazon as well. You can buy like a box of a hundred of these for like oh, a few bucks. Uh, lastly, we have our spore syringe. See here, you can see little specks of spores inside the syringe. What you want to do is uh, shake your syringe very well to break up these clumps of spores. What I like to do is I'll bang them on the table on an edge, try to get them to break apart. Now here these spores are a bit stubborn and they don't want to break apart so we're going to keep shaking them up. It's starting to break apart here. Now I'm gonna keep shaking vigorously here until I break this yawn apart. So each individual black speck of spore that you see in the solution contains like hundreds or thousands of microscopic spores that you can't see in your with your eyes. So when you shake it apart in here, you're gonna distribute those microscopic spores among the uh, sterile water that's inside the syringe here. If you ever use your spore syringe in the past and find that you're not getting any germination, it's a good chance that you probably didn't shake up your syringe well enough and you just inoculated a bunch of sterile water into your medium. Alright, so this is what you're looking for when the specks are all broken apart like that. That's when your spore syringe is good to use. So I'll give it a final shake here just to end things off. I forgot the syringe needle tip here. Alright, now I'll go ahead and open up the syringe needle tip. These come in this sterile pack as well, so they're clean from the first use. So you want to twist off the lure lock cap here, and twist on the syringe needle. And we'll give it one more final shake just to be sure everything's evenly mixed. So the first method I'm going to show you is we're going to do a spore syringe liquid directly to agar. I'm going to squirt some of these spore solution into my shot glass. We're going to use this later with the uh, inoculation loop and the swab. So for inoculating your agar dishes, you really only want one or two drops of your spore solution on the agar. And that's enough. That's all you need. 
in my experience, I find that if you haven't used the spore syringe yet, the first plunge ends up squirting a lot more liquid than you really need. So squirting it out onto something else will give you easier control to squirt one or two drops onto your plate. And the next method, we'll use the inoculation loop here. So what I'm going to do is flame sterilize the inoculation loop. This makes sure that the any bacteria that might be on the loop is going to be toast. So after I flame sterilize it, I'm going to let it cool down for a few seconds here. And then with the spore solution in our shot glass, uh, let's see if I can get it to focus. Uh, you can see little specks of spores kind of floating around in there. So with the inoculation loop, we're going to go ahead and dip it into the spore solution, swirl it around a little bit. This is going to get the spores to stick onto the loop. And then with the loop, we can go ahead and spread those spores on our plate. So I like to kind of like do like a zigzag motion, kind of like streak it across the plate. The more surface area you can touch on the agar with the loop, the, the better off you'll be at getting the spores to land on the agar. And the final method, I'm going to be using the sterile cotton swab. It's the same method as the inoculation loop. Uh, pretty much going to dunk my swab into the spore solution, hopefully get some spores to land on the swab, and then same method, we're going to streak the swab onto the agar plate, kind of in a zigzag motion, and I like to twist the swab back and forth just to roll it around on the agar, make sure that any spores that might be on there ends up on the agar plate. Here I'll give you guys a close-up look of the swab. You can see the little black specks of spores are on there. So this is what you want. Alright, now I'm going to just clean up here. And the last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to use some parafilm to wrap my plates here. If you're using the Kahneman cup agars, you can just put the lid on top of them. With the Petri dishes, you have to use something to seal off the plates here. So I'm using parafilm today. You can also use saran wrap to seal off your plates. I've seen people use that. I've also seen people use micropore tape to seal it off. So if you don't have parafilm and you have some micropore tape laying around, you can use that to wrap around your plates. And as far as storing your agar plates, I like to keep mine at room temperature. My room varies from 68 degrees Fahrenheit to 76 sometimes. So for you guys that are in Celsius, that's 20 degrees Celsius to 24 degrees Celsius. Alright, so I'm going to finish wrapping my plates here and when we come back I'll show you guys what these look like after the spores start germinating. Alright, here we are one week later and this is what your plates May end up looking like if you have successful germination. Here's the plate that has the two drops of spore solution directly in the middle here. When you start seeing that white fuzz appear, that means your spores have successfully germinated. Congratulations! We're now a proud parent of mycelium culture. And here's the swab plate. Since we streaked the swab across the plate, there's going to be multiple inoculation points for the spores, so you end up with multiple germination points. Now I find the success rate of germinating spore solutions a lot higher with the swab and the inoculation loop. Now here's the loop plate, same thing applies here since there's multiple spores going on, multiple germination points. And here are the same plates 10 days later. So around this time is when you might start noticing mold or bacteria growing. I would start making transfers if I noticed anything unusual growing in my petries. So out of the three methods, I really recommend using the swab and loop to inoculate your plates. Here's the swab plate. This one did really well. I might just leave this one out for a couple more days and if it ends up being clean, I'm going to put these to grains. And here's our inoculation loop plate. I'm going to make transfers on this dish. There seems to be a little bit of some mold growing at the bottom there. 
So I'm going to transfer my clean my sim that's furthest away from that point. So anyways, uh, that's how you get started with spores on agar. If you enjoyed the video, I appreciate it if you hit the like button. Subscribe if you want to see more mycology videos. And I'll have links to my Instagram, Patreon, and Discord in the description below. I'll see you guys in the next class. Peace out.